Oops. <laughs> this review should be called How to Miss Gears on a Bike. <laughs> girl is probably on her first motorcycle test so let's just see if we can zip round try the acceleration so there you go it has got enough um, zip to get past okay welcome back to the channel guys and I've got something exciting to show you today we're actually sat on a Royal Enfield Meteor 350 motorcycle I've had a little bit of a thing with Royal Enfield for quite a while now. Uh, almost one of those kind of secret hidden uh, desires to, to have a retro looking bike um, despite riding super sports all the time. So when I saw the news about the Meteor 350, I really wanted to investigate a little bit further and potentially look at this as, as something I'd, I'd purchase myself. Um, the bike is this bike, particular bike, is a Meteor 350 Fireball, and it's in yellow. And the Fireball is actually the base spec on the Meteor 350s. And we'll stop in, in a little bit, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the um, some of the different offerings from this lineup. So, what's the bike to, like to ride? Well, it takes a bit of getting used to um, because normally I'd be hunched up, perched on top of the bike. But I'm very quickly becoming very comfortable with this relaxed riding style it's just a joy to be on really um, I can flat foot this bike easily I, I am I am almost six foot so uh, flat footing bikes is not not unheard of for me but it is very nice to be able to very comfortably maneuver the bike around um, and I think for shorter riders this bike would be really really good so what is, what is the bike then? The bike is a, a retro styled um, entry level motorcycle. We've got a single cylinder 350cc motor. It's a hallmark of Royal Enfield to have the single cylinder in there. And it's got um, new technology, so it's a brand new engine. It's got a balancer shaft. You get a lot smoother running with this bike. So if you look in the mirrors, I don't have a great deal of vibration through the mirrors. Um, I actually have more vibration on my 600, which is four cylinder. So let's go down through the gears as we come up to this junction. Ease our way out in first and very easily make the turn. To change up, you've got this paddle at the back, which again takes some getting used to. So I push my heel down, um, that puts me up into second, and then same again into third. So very comfortable gear change. So the bike's got um, normal way up forks, single uh, disc up front, and I've got more than enough stopping power. And I'll, I'll come out of this little village now and just demonstrate the uh, the brakes on the bike. Yes. So let's try a braking test. Whoa! This bike stops with more than enough vigor for the size of the engine. Let's give it a bit of a... Okay. I'm opening the far wide there so you can see the acceleration. It doesn't have a rev counter on the bike, but it does have a rev limiter so I can feel it cut in. So very comfortable to ride. The switch gear is really easy to use. So I have got summer gloves on today, uh, very supple and, and very nimble. Um, but everything you can imagine, even with thick winter gloves on, is, is really easy to use. The starter button is actually a switch, a toggle switch, uh, which, is, which is a nice change. It's got a, a very retro feel. Okay, let's talk about the display. So you've got the traditional style analog speedometer. But you've also got a digital insert which shows you fuel, time, shows you what gear you're in, and shows you the, the range. Now, talking of the range, on this bike we can go up to 300 miles on a single tank. It's an incredibly fuel efficient bike. On the right of the speedometer, we've got the uh, Royal Enfield Tripper, which is a little application that, that syncs to your smartphone. And this one hasn't been set up today. But the, all the reviews on that say it's absolutely fantastic. It's very simple satellite navigation. 
uh, but without any of the sort of faff and complication. It'll just show, show you turns that you've got to take coming up. Um, I'd like to see that demoed actually, but let's um, let's just go with it for now. I'm going to find somewhere to stop and just have a look at the bike in a minute. Okay, so let's go up, fourth, fifth, see if we can open it up a little bit. You do get that familiar whack whack that you get with Royal Enfield lumps, but it's a lot smoother, there's less vibration. I have ridden other small class C single cylinders before and um, I found them to be very vibey, but not so much on this one. So we're in the fourth now. We're hitting 70 miles an hour. Uh, I'm gonna have to slow down because this car's turning, but let's try and resume speed. And I'm gonna switch into fifth, which is, I believe fifth is top. And let's see if I can pull a little bit up to 70. At the moment, the wind buffeting isn't too bad, actually. It's quite pleasant. But what a beautiful road to be test riding this bike on. And there we have it. I'm, I'm reaching 70 miles now, which is the national speed limit in the UK. And this bike just a joy to, just to pilot around the country lanes. Pleasant experience to be on this Meteor 350. It's extremely comfortable. I think you could ride for hours on this little bike. I'm going to drop down. I have to remember I'm not on a sports bike now. Yeah, we are not on a super sport. Come up to stop at the traffic lights. Yeah, very easy to put my foot down. I do keep making the mistake of putting my feet right back here next to the exhaust, um, which is probably because I haven't ridden the cruiser in a long period of time. I think I'll try and stop in a minute. Okay, down we go. Wow, there's such a turning circle on this bike. Right, finding neutral. It's actually a little bit easier said than done, okay. So you tap it gently to go down into neutral. Oh, the bike's fitted with a centre stand. Not used to that. Cancel the indicator. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of a walk around of the Royal Enfield Meteor 350. So we're looking at the spec level fireball. Uh, you get two colour options in this. You get the yellow and the red tank with matching rim tape. This option above that is the Stella, which comes with a backrest, um, black leather uh, seats, just the same as this. Uh, I think slightly different uh, colour combination on the trim. And the, the top tier is the, oh sorry, I should say with the Stella, you get a darker red, a blue and a black option um, on the color schemes. The top option is the Supernova, and that comes with the, the screen, which I think looks great. Uh, black, uh, black seat's gone and you've got a brown leather um, special seat for the Supernova with a backrest again for the, for the pillion. You also have polished faces on the spokes, uh, so it means the, the wheels look a little bit sharper. But yeah, more or less, the, the three variants of the Meteor 350 are quite similar. I think most people will go for the Fireball because it looks a little bit more sporty without the backrest. And there's not that much difference in price. I think the Fireball is 3,500, the Stella is 37, and I think the, the Supernova, the top tier, is about 3,800, 3,900 pounds. So they're all quite similar. This bike obviously is a kind of a retro cruiser. 
it's small capacity, uh, not going to go anywhere quickly. Um, it'll be competing with the mutts and the the bullets out there. I think Royal Enfield might have it, you know. They've got the quality, they've got the, the brand recognition. It looks absolutely fantastic. The quality on this thing is amazing. And um, and it rides great. And you can see there you've got the traditional teardrop shaped tank. Oh, one other thing that the, uh, the upper two tiers of bike have, they actually have an embossed uh, sign there instead of the, the stuck on one. So you have a, a, a metallic uh, emblem there that says Royal Enfield on it, so that's a little bit different. Okay, all right, let's get this bike back on the road. It's funny it displays first. Yeah, you're obviously in neutral. Not quite sure what that is. Bit of a delay between the uh, display and what actually what gear you in. So let's pull off. Oh, look at my feet. A lot smoother. If you look in my mirrors, I don't get any vibration at all. Let's, let's slow it down. Very easy to flat foot this bike, as I just found out. The bike's also quite light as well. I think it weighs. 170, 180 kg, but I'll double check that. Okay, I'm just riding around town today. Very easy to maneuver, really nice steering lock on the bike. So yeah, very easy to maneuver and very uh, good turning circle on the bike. Drop down into first, foot down. The gearbox is smooth and easy to use. It takes a little bit of getting used to when, you, when you're used to riding sport bikes because you've got this paddle at the back. Um, but it's very comfortable. Very comfortable riding position, very easy to go up and down through the gears. I think this bike is designed for people who are probably new to motorcycling or maybe like the idea of, of, of getting a retro. Maybe they've ridden a long time ago but want to get back into bikes. Or maybe you just have a passion for cruisers. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic bike. Controls are easy to see, so you've got the analog speedo there at the top. And um, inside that you've got a digital display that just shows you the, uh, uh, the time, what gear you're in, which is going to be helpful for newer riders. It tells you the number of miles you've done on, on this trip. This bike has a fuel economy that's um, incredible, you know, it goes through 300 miles on a single tank. It's a different experience of riding a motorbike, to be honest. Um, you, you, you're not desperate to go everywhere at 120 miles an hour. It's very, very sedate, so you can feel that we just went over the bumps and just soaked them up. Um, very comfortable. Just perfectly, the perfect bike for, uh, for cruising around on. I'd also suggest using this bike for a touring purpose because if, if, imagine you can go 300 miles and um, provided the 21 horsepower of the engine uh, can take two passengers and luggage, which I, I suspect they will be able to do as long as you're not in a rush. But it would be great for that as well. It is quite nimble, I mean, because it's light, obviously it's no 600 Super Sport, but because it's nice and light, it's great fun to just zip around on. See if I can pull off an overtake here. So I'm in four. Uh, traffic coming the other way, but let's see if we can zip round. Nobody behind me. And round we go. So we'll we'll perform overtakes for you. And that's something people worry about for these smaller capacity bikes: is whether you'll be able to pull off the overtake. So here I go. Back in again. And that just demonstrates that the bike can be used, not for spirited riding, but it'll get you past slow moving traffic. And really you wouldn't want the bike to be too underpowered, you couldn't do that kind of thing. Visibility is great out of the mirrors as well. It's actually a bit of a treat because most of the bikes I've ridden before have had quite poor visibility. The engine though isn't too intrusive. It's kind of a gentle hum. 
which is a little bit of a nice change from, from sports bikes, it's quite pleasant. And as I come up to this left hand turn here, you'll see that it's very easy to use the switch gear, braking is easy, drop down through the gears, shoulder check, and pop around the corner. Up into third. It's just, a, it's just a joy to ride this little thing. I've got my um, fuel gauge flashing, but I imagine that means I've probably got about 50 miles left in the tank, knowing this bike. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it, guys. I mean, yeah, what a nice little bike to be riding around on. As I mentioned, this is the, the Fireball edition, and I think most people will go for the Fireball. It looks a little bit more sporty go up again, into four. Let's just try and test that wind buffeting again. Don't pull out, don't pull out. Yeah, so here I am, 60 miles an hour. And I think that's where your wind buffeting is going to be a little bit problematic. 65 plus, yeah, it's starting to buff it quite strongly there. 70, and I'll slow down. Whilst we're on the subject, the brakes are great. Drop down into third. So whilst the engine doesn't propel you along at supersonic speeds, it's got enough gear to do your overtaking. It actually encourages you to ride safely and sensibly. I think that's something that's a little bit missing. So many bikes are marketed about being breathtakingly fast, you know, ripping your arms out of the sockets, acceleration. And it's quite nice just to have a bike where you just know that it's not for that. It, it, it's just for enjoying being out on the open road. I think you're much less likely to have an accident riding a bike like this rather than people riding super sports and uh, super nakers where you're encouraged to ride the bikes fast. So, I mean, I love the look of this thing. Teardrop gas tank. The bars uh, got a little bit of a raise to them. Obviously, I'll have to buy all new gear if I was to buy one of these bikes because <laughs> a uh, Power Ranger suit wouldn't quite wouldn't quite cut it, would it? Will you see me coming? I am bright yellow. Or she? Good. Okay, let's drop down. I think I'm going to try filtering here because there's quite a lot of traffic. Let's see if we can get on. Indicate sure who might be coming up. Go around this van. Off we go. So pulling away is quite easy. Paddle down with your heel to go up. Road works every time you try and ride a bike or test a bike. Bloody road works everywhere. And pedestrians, come to think of it. Okay. And cyclists, triple on top. Come on. Where are you going, buddy? Share the road, that's it. And again, nice and easy to handle actually, this bike, lovely, really enjoy it. Okay, so a little bit more time riding, we'll go up one. Oops. <laughs> this review should be called How to Miss Gears on a Bike. Yeah, coming from a sports bike, I, I'm not quite even used to the having two, two gear levers, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sure there's loads of people are laughing uh, at my expense right now. Amateur schoolboy errors. Nonetheless, we'll get there. This bike's very forgiving. Thank you Royal Enfield for making a bike forgiving for, for riders of 600cc bikes. <laughs> One thing I'll say though, I'm really enjoying myself. It's just something about it. Maybe you can't quantify it. It doesn't, you know, you can't look at the brake horsepower or the value for money or ratios or anything scientific, it's just something that dropped down. Something about this bike is just incredibly satisfying to be on. It's really easy to ride as well. Look, I'm just 
coming up to this roundabout. And look round we go. First time I've ridden this bike, and quite a sharp roundabout, really easy to get round. Just hit the paddle to go down. That vibe is coming from the road, not not this beautifully smooth engine. I'm really starting to fall in love with this bike, especially the, the hum of the engine. It's lovely. And how safe does it feel? Like it just feels wonderful. You know, you're not you're comfy, you just feel perfectly comfortable perched up on this thing. It's really a nice experience actually, I'm super enjoying it. I have been caught by every single red light there. Let's go down. Oh, there we go again. <laughs> Let's go back down through the gears to first. One thing I have found though, the finding neutrals takes a little bit of getting used to. You've got to literally tap the back pedal like so. It took a while to learn that. I am in neutral now. Had a few false neutrals. Um, which I don't think is the bike's fault, I think it's my fault. So if I lift my visor up, you should be able to hear the hum of the... Oops. Yeah, with the visor open, you can hear the hum of the engine, listen. That's what the bike sounds like. Okay, down into first, do our checks. Round we go. Come on. Second, guys are down so you guys don't hear wind noise buffeting and blowing all over the place. What an experience. You know what, I really like the yellow as well, I can't wait to see the other colours. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm looking forward to, probably I want to see the brown actually. Uh, I always like the I always like quirky colours on on cars and bikes. I mean, if you uh, if you want to see something really weird, look at Sepang bronze on the BMW uh, E60 M5. It's the kind of uh, very strange colour combination I I like on um, vehicles, shall we say? Interestingly, look, we're now back to having two thirds. No, we're now back to having two fifths of a tank of fuel which is a little bit different. Before we were, now we're going back to empty. So maybe it's hovering between the two. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Now as I said before, I'd like to try out the, um, the Tripper navigation system. I'm sure if that was synced with your phone, it'd be absolutely fantastic. Okay, so. Down to first. Oh, it's probably a little bit too low. Okay, indicate, off I go. And I'm just going to find a place to stop up here. Up. Okay, guys, so, well, thanks for joining us for this review of the Royal Enfield. Um, if you like our reviews, then please do like the video. Also, please comment. Um, and if you like this kind of motorbike review, as opposed to sort of a, a top lists or, or vlogs, then let me know, and I'll, I'll try and get some more uh, test rides booked in and show you some more bikes uh, that you want, that you guys want to see. So thanks a lot, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next one.